Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is for all the defensive minded players out there that like to make their base completely unraidable with stone fortifications. By my count, there are five main buildings that can do that role. The regular tower line going up to the keep, Japanese towers after the Yasuma tech that lets them shoot three arrows, the bombard tower, the castle, and the Bulgarian mini castle, the Krepost. I've looked at some of those in depth before, but in this video, I want to compare all of them at once and gauge their relative value. To do that, I'll look at them from the perspective of total damage that they offer for their cost, as well as their hardiness. Let's check them out. To start with their cost, remember towers are a bit more wood in Definitive Edition than they were previously, jumping from 25 to 50. The Bombard Tower is also a bit unique in that it has a gold cost. Stone-wise, the Crepost is nearly triple the price of a keep, but in terms of total resources, it's double, with about double the build time as well. I think a nice middle ground is to say that the Crepost is about two and a half times the investment of a regular tower, and the castle is around four to five times the investment. Of course, castles do a lot of other things, like research, make unique units and trebuchets, and Krepos also make conics, but in this case I'm mostly focused on their defensive anti-raiding potential. While on the subject of cost, in addition to their cost to build, you also need to think about any necessary research. A Japanese player trying to tech into their multi-arrow towers, for example, has a bit more of an initial commitment. Not only is there the Yasuma tech itself, which needs to be researched at a castle, but also the various tower upgrades from the university. In total, it's 1150 food and wood just to get them upgraded. Other towers also have some of these costs, and the Bombard Tower in particular requires its own tech as well as chemistry. But let's assume you've gotten all of the upgrades available because you're in it for the long haul. Are the different types of towers actually worth making over defensive castles? And how do the civilization specific buildings stack up in terms of value? Just looking at all of their attacks, you can see it varies quite a bit, but that doesn't necessarily tell the full story. Considering the variety of arrows and different attack speeds, I think damage per minute is a bit more useful to look at. Now higher pierce armor for the target would affect these numbers, but the trend is pretty clear that the Krepost has nearly the same attack as the castle, with the Bombard Tower coming in third in terms of damage. Notice here that towers with Yasuma are lagging behind, and keeps are even worse, doing about a quarter of the damage of a castle. If we account for their cost, though, by dividing that damage by the resources to build, we actually find the castle and regular tower give the worst payoff, with Yasuma, Bombard Towers, and the Krepost all having roughly similar value. In this case, they're all giving a little over 5 damage per minute for each resource that went into building them, or about double the cost efficiency of regular keeps and castles. That said, despite having the best numbers here, I don't think the Bombard Tower is actually the best of the group, since its damage is slow and highly concentrated, leading to a lot of overkill. The main takeaway for me here is that the Yasuma Tower and Krepost are both much harder hitting than the castle when you factor in their cost, giving excellent value in that sense. If we correct just for the stone and gold cost, ignoring wood, Yasuma Towers give by far the best value, though of course that comes after a large upfront cost to get to that point. This is all against regular sorts of units though, and rams represent a unique threat to buildings. In that case, the extra shots of the castle and Krepost mean they do 60% more damage to rams than Yasuma Towers, while you can see Bombard Towers are doing the worst, with 1 damage per attack to rams, as well as firing the slowest. Correcting for their cost though, on a per capita basis, Yasuma Towers again end up being the best at fighting off rams. Guys, I'm starting to think the Japanese might actually be pretty good. A side note here as well, though it's not a big deal, is that the Krepost has one less range than towers and castles. The fact range is measured from the edge of the building though means they basically end with the same map coverage anyway. So that's the damage analysis, and it seems pretty neck and neck so far between Yasuma and Bombard Towers and Krepos. There's maybe a slight edge to Yasuma Towers in the long run, but now let's take a look at all of their survivability. Looking at their HP, the Krepost and Towers are all pretty similar, with this being the clear statistical edge for the castle. If you really need to hold a particular area, it's certainly going to give you the most longevity. Again, correcting for their cost though, towers end up looking a fair bit better. Even without masonry and architecture, towers are giving you more than 10 HP for every resource you put in. To frame this a different way, it's faster to destroy 2,000 stone worth of creposts and castles than it is to destroy 2,000 stone worth of towers. 
There is a slight armor advantage to Krepos and Castles though, which against melee units in particular can be significant. Of course, it doesn't prevent bonus damage, so the usefulness there is really dependent on what you're up against. And finally, the last consideration is their garrison space. Krepos are the same as castles in that respect, and end up being the most cost efficient of the buildings for hiding villagers, with towers and castles actually being fairly comparable. So to put it all together, first of all, I think it is fair to say the Krepost is like a scaled down castle. The advantage is that it can create units and do similar damage to a castle for a much lower cost. The downside is it has less HP than an equivalent resources worth of towers. Krepos and towers can also be built immediately on hitting Castle Age to secure a really important location. Yasuma Towers, on the other hand, have a more expensive initial cost, but in terms of stone efficiency in the long run, they have the better damage output, especially against rams, and more HP per resource spent. Long term, its cheap cost makes it easier to cover a large area, so I see it more as the ultimate anti-raiding building to put all over your base. At the same time, Bombard Towers also look quite good on paper, but again, I have some reservations about taking their damage at base value. I think they have a harder time hitting units, overkill a lot more, and die terribly to ramps. Still, the fact the regular keep is so weak in comparison means it is the scarier building to go up against. So hopefully that gives a bit of an overall perspective of the defensive buildings and what they have to offer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.